You're listening to the Minnesota Progressive Repartee, a show about... Wait, repartee? Is that a word? Is oh, that what I'm supposed to say? Oh, you the heck is repartee? better believe it, Mr. Announcer Friend. It is a word that means banter. And All right, you're listening to the Minnesota Progressive Repartee. See? Whatever. Hosted by Doug Paget, Brett Johnson, and Hunter Hawes. If nothing else, uh, your afternoon on AM 950 from 4 till 5 will improve your vocabulary. Add a little, add a little French to your day. Repartee. Repartee. Hey, normally on Thursdays, it's Hunter Haas all hour. Uh, but Hunter and I are switching days uh, for this week, uh, swapping. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I can't work tomorrow. Hunter can. Uh, so thank you, my friend. Thanks for, uh, for covering No up. problemo. And then the last couple of days, because I, I want to make sure people got enough Hunter. You know, some people, they, <laughs> they, they sort of plan for that, right? Like Thursday is their Hunter Haas day and Friday, you know, it's their date night or whatever. So they're, they're preparing themselves for this. Uh, and then Brett and I were talking yesterday because I, I made the I made the uh, the the mistake of of saying the name Bernie Sanders, or maybe I didn't even say Bernie Sanders. Come to think of it, somebody may have just called in and said Bernie Sanders, and it's a very popular topic. Boom! There it went. So uh, I thought, well, okay, this is a good time. Uh, it's a Thursday, so Hunter would like to talk about Bernie Sanders anyway. So uh, I'm going to suggest that you and I have the great Bernie Sanders debate uh, and try to capture other people's ideas, uh, not only our own perspectives here, which uh, you know is always always helpful to people, I'm sure, uh, but to help frame it so that people know what others are getting at. Because sometimes, you know, on the internet or with your friends or uh, re- reading news articles, sometimes it's hard to sort of. Uh, get your head around the entire argument that somebody's making, right? Because, you know, they're just saying one particular thing. Uh, so I thought over the course of the day we could, uh, hour, we could chat about um, other candidates as well as as well as well Bernie Sanders uh, and what people think about that. Uh, I, I don't think he should be the president. I do think he should be an influence in our political system. So that's my stance. That's, that's, the, that's the perspective I bring to it. I think he's an, an important voice as a progressive. Uh, I don't think he should be seeking the... Uh, the the endorsement of the Democratic Party. Uh, I, I just think that we can get into this a little bit later. I just think as a bare minimum, you should count yourself as the member of a party that you're seeking its uh, its endorsement of. You know, I think it's just that's. I think that's a pleasant, if not necessary, uh, thing to do. And I do think he should be president because he is the primary influence of the Democratic Party and the left mm. movement in general. Uh, so. Who better to lead the charge? Because really, the president dictates what legislation is brought about. I mean, right now in Congress, it's all about the stupid wall because that's all the president talks about. Yeah. Uh, OK. Yeah, OK. Uh, we should chat about that uh, as we go. We'll, we'll, we'll mark that down as one of our one of our content points, because I would like to uh, I, I'd like to, to ping pong back and forth with you on that to suggest that, in fact, the president does not set the legislative agenda to the degree that many of us believe they do. Maybe on certain signature issues. It's my, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. You can interrupt me anytime. It's, it's my uh, impression, though, that the things that Bernie Sanders holds to and, and feels have been important and has for, you know, 50 years are things that are better achieved through the legislative process than they are through the executive process, than the executive branch. So I think he should, uh, you know, I think he should be the 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 Senate Majority Leader. Be a great role for him. I think mm-hmm. there's a number That's of things that he could do. I think there's a number of things he could do because the ideas that he has, of which I will say they are a uh, a, a knowable set. There's a knowable set of Bernie Sanders uh, ideas. Uh, it's going to be one of my points about why I don't think he actually wants to be president, nor should he be. But uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But he has a knowable set of things, and those are best represented, as far as I can tell having listened very closely to him and very frequently, uh, to the role of a senator. He's actually in the right job. I don't know why he wants to leave that job. I think he should, he should do the job he's in differently if he really wants to see the the, the impact of the kinds of uh, ideas that he has. But, okay, so the New Deal, that was from the executive branch, the Great Society, the executive branch. The, the president dictates what these sweeping reforms that go on, and that's what Bernie's candidacy is, is a sweeping reform. It's a political revolution that we, we haven't had a leftward movement like this. So to just say he should stay in the Senate, it, it's that's not adequate for what he's trying to accomplish. 
Well, it, it certainly it must not be adequate for what he's trying to accomplish because he hasn't accomplished it, which is a point I think is is could could be made to either side of this particular uh, discussion. Right. The, well, maybe had he been president for four or eight years rather than a congressperson and a senator for, uh, you know, decades, maybe those things would have been accomplished. I tend to think, though, in the four or eight years that a person has as being president, they move by pretty quickly and they're actually not. Even the New Deal was a Congress supported idea that was that was brought to uh, uh, FDR and then pushed through with presidential support. So I'm not suggesting that a president doesn't have a role to play. But the kinds of things that 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 Sanders is talking about now. OK, Hunter, here's 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 I would love your 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 uh, thought on this as a as a as a true blue, a true blue believer, because with many of my true blue believing uh, Bernie fans, uh, friends, uh, I can't really uh, um, you, I think, as a, as a particular person, you and my, my friend John White, who's probably listening right now. And he's 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 my real coach on all this uh, mm-hmm. are. are Prog- are are super progressive, uber progressive, because my critique of Bernie Sanders is I don't think he's actually talking about sweeping reforms. I don't think he goes far enough. My critique of him is that he he's he postures himself as if he's in an entirely new situation which he sort of gets there by saying that he's a democratic socialist, but the details they don't go nearly far enough to be sweeping. His entire legislative contribution and arguments that he's been making have actually, I think, been nibbling around the edges and not going for the heart of it. They're not to the level of the New Deal. Right. So 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 you take any of them, you take, you know, basically regulating the banks, regulating the economy, working with uh, college debt and trying to deal with that by having tuition at community colleges and public colleges be free. Uh, to uh, to students via via states and you look at increasing the minimum wage, Th- those are those are dealing with the system as it currently is and exists, I would argue. And he's trying to make some improvements in those systems. He you know, when he was in the uh, in the uh, as a as a congressperson, he his, his little nickname was the Amendment King. He was the king of the amendment. I want to add this in. I want to add that. In. He's an, I, I find him to be, uh, he makes a, sm, a, a smallish but important contribution to the argument. I don't think he's framing a different societal norm, a different societal approach, because I don't think he's actually thinking in the, in the, in the full picture. So push back on that. For someone like me who's suggesting that Bernie Sanders doesn't go far enough to claim the mantle of huge societal sweeping reforms, like I would love it if he would if if he would be supportive of universal um, uh, base minimum uh, income. That would be fantastic. It's and he the, has said he's open to that. He's that open. just hasn't been a pillar. But OK, exactly, consider this. Exactly. He's consider open this. to it. And what, what he pushes for is to increase the dependence on the minimum wage. So anyway. OK, so go, go ahead. All right. Go. Okay. Give me your push. Uh, 2004, yeah. uh, Dennis Kucinich considered a complete radical. His candidacy was a joke because it was too far left. 2016 came around. Bernie Sanders put a legitimate threat. And since that, uh, his candidacy in that primary, these have become mainstream issues where back in 2004, you couldn't even talk about this without being laughed off. Even Jon Stewart would laugh off Dennis Kucinich as just a... a a non-person, a, a joke candidate. So <laughs> Look, Bernie this... has pushed the pendulum of what we're talking about mm. as a possibility, unlike anyone else. And what's different about him is he has been the chief author of all these bills that we care about. So he has a plan to actually get these things done, whereas some of these other candidates are picking up the trendy positions to gain uh popularity in the primary where he's the guy who's written all this for decades yeah i i would i would grant to you that bernie sanders ideas he has been um consistently holding them for a long time and many of those ideas have come into popular understanding at a whole different way but i would push back the idea that it was only bernie sanders let's say who was trying to suggest universal income or i'm sorry u- universal health care I'm, I'm not saying no. he's not but he well, has authored a plan that has i get that but here but okay so all right 
So talk me through what are the thing when when in your list you say, well, Bernie Sanders held these ideas first, and now they've become na- ma- ma- mainstays. Isn't that universal health care? Isn't that minimum wage? And isn't that free college at the community college? Yeah, those are the, those I'd say are the, the, the pillars. Yeah, those are uh, pillars. And he's been on. I mean, I've, I've heard him and, and also some economic reforms. I think he wants more uh, more re- regulation about uh, banks and about how um, how our economy generally functions. You know, I think and I think he's right. Look, I, I'm not arguing if Bernie Sanders is right about those points. My point on the, uh, in this whole segment is. I don't think he goes far enough, right? Hillary Clinton and the other crowd in the early 90s, they were pushing for universal health care back in the early 90s. So it wasn't – granted that some people heard this for the first time out of the the mouth of Bernie Sanders, but universal health care across the system has been something that we people have been arguing for since the 1950s and 60s. So to land that squarely and say that Bernie's the one who brought that to the American consciousness – I'm not even sure that that matches the, uh, the, 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 the reality. Now. But I'm not saying that that's not uh, that he doesn't deserve credit for it. Look, the guy has hung in there like God bless him that he's that he's hung in there and he's kept these ideas out in front through the uh, through the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s. But OK, I'm playing the hand I'm dealt here and oh. uh, I don't see anyone else <laughs> who uh, represents what you're talking about. So, oh, OK, that's a good point. We'll, we'll come back to that maybe after the break, <laughs> that that in, in light of the fact that that my critique of Sanders is he doesn't go far enough as a progressive. He's the closest thing to somebody who's even willing to go that far. Mm-hmm. Right. That's a fair that's a fair argument. I think I think that's a very fair argument. Um, and uh, and OK, so so we. When we come back here after the break, uh, we'll, maybe we'll take some callers, but, but I'd like to uh, I, I'll circle around on a couple more of, of these bits and let, and let you have a chance to sort of uh, lean in hard on w- why you think he really does want to be president and should be in that role as opposed to being in the role that he's been in of uh, championing policy uh, at, the, uh, at the senatorial level. So uh, this is AM 950, the Progressive Voice of Minnesota, and this is the Minnesota Progressive Repartee with Doug and Hunter today. Hey, welcome back. Uh, Doug Padgett in with Hunter Haas today. And we're talking about Bernie Sanders because he's running for office. And a lot of the listeners here on AM 950 and people on the live stream, um, well, they're getting fired up. Uh, people have thoughts about this stuff, uh, about Bernie Sanders. He brings out something. And, and I will say, Hunter, to that, to that point, um, he taps in somewhere to a people uh, that feel that the other candidates and the rest of the Democratic system, the Democratic Party system, does not um, speak to them. So uh, to that point, I think um, Bernie Sanders being in the national flow and throwing himself into the presidential mix, I think is a really good thing. So, so I'm, I'm a little confusing here, right? So as a, yeah. you, 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 get, you gotta kind of, you gotta kind of listen a little, a little carefully. It's sounds like somebody, you know, if, if you're not careful, I sound like I don't make sense, but if you are a careful listener, uh, you'll, you'll think of a very thin thread of how this makes sense. I think Bernie Sanders should be in the mix. I think he should even be in the debates. Much to your point that uh, there's not enough other candidates that are leaning in hard on his three or four or five big pillars. Uh, now, now, I happen to think uh, that he shouldn't claim. I think people around him shouldn't grant him the he's the only true progressive that there is and everybody else isn't really. I think that that, that goes uh, that's a step or three too far. No, I don't say that. I definitely don't say that. But I don't think he should win. And I don't think he would make a very good president. Uh, temperamentally, history, uh, what the president has to do, and it's become more and more clear to me with the, in the Trump era about what a person who is not wanting to be in that job has to tolerate, put up with, and underperform if they're not good at that job. They're, not every person should would, would make a good president. I think every person should run for president because we should all, you know, uh, offer ourselves up. And especially anybody who really wants to. Absolutely. You should run. Um, but I don't think everyone's set for it. And I don't see in Bernie Sanders way of behaving since I've been paying attention to him since, I don't know, it's 2001 or 1999, somewhere in there. Um, 
I mean, a little bit going to the first Iraq war because he was one of the only uh, Congress people, you know, that really, really spoke out against the Iraq war. And I found that to be a, a compelling idea even back then, when, when, back when I thought uh, that using military power was a reasonable choice. Uh, he, he, he helped me sort of move down that move down that path. But I just don't think he should be the president. I, I'm not I'm not taking away his 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 progressive uh, um, uh, cred. Uh, I just think it uh, that. Uh, and and I don't I don't really think uh, that that he uh, that he wants to be. I think what he wants to do is to move the Democratic Party uh, to becoming more progressive. Do you, do you think? But but you you actually think uh, that that him being the president itself would be a uh, would 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 be the right thing? Well, absolutely. Well, I agree with what you're saying that he's not the only progressive option, and that does get thrown around a lot, like the on the online contentious. Uh, arguments with people Mm -hmm. that comes Mm -hmm. up and uh no i don't agree with that i think elizabeth warren is a good progressive Mm -hmm. Uh, but i think that bernie is a principled progressive with the things (laughs) he stands for and represents what i care for and stand for better than the field does does he really though i mean i okay (sighs) i mean how could you have a better track record than bernie sanders he's been doing the same thing for 30 years he's honest that's what appeals to people who don't typically vote democrat is they he's not a a polished politician he's not a smooth talking bill clinton he's someone who has said the same thing and stood for what he stands for his entire career which is rare yeah, and but you, you brought but, up like the Iraq War in the two thousands, well, and when the whole Democratic Party was civil unions and pro yeah. war, that yeah. he never Defense had of marriage to, act, all that. Yeah, yeah, he never had to uh, have that cognitive dissonance because he stood for what he stood for. Great. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Look, look, I I grant that, but it seems as if people are saying. Well, because he's been principled and held these ideas for a long time, that would make him a good president. I that's that's where I differ. Look, I, I'm not going to take a swing at a, at, at a radio show host because I think it's, you know, the most privileged job that anyone could ever seek to have. But there have been radio show hosts who have been very principled as well, but they haven't passed legislation to make those principles take action. They've been trying to influence popular thought or influence political thought so that those uh, ideas could have ramification in law. The the, the thing that that. Uh, gets me about Bernie Sanders is he's more of a pundit on these ideas than he is someone who has spent all the years that he spent in the federal government bringing about their influence in law. Mm, I disagree with that, too. Uh, So consider uh, a few months ago, it was, uh, I can't remember the exact name, but something uh, Amazon bill. He he drafted up the legislation to put pressure on Amazon, Mm -hmm. and then uh, within a couple weeks of that, Amazon raised their minimum wage to all employees to $15 an hour, which was a direct result of the pressure that Bernie Sanders himself put on the company. So he is effective at getting things done. And that, look, I'm just giving look, you an no, example no, from the past no, two, three months. There's no company, especially not something the size of Amazon, that changes their pay policies because of a pending bill. That That's not. Well, there was mounting pressure because of the exposure he brought to the issue. Look, that, there was mounting. Uh, it was going to be a battle if they didn't do this. No, there, so there's... it was either going to be a law or they were going to face a just complete they backlash never... from the people and workers. They, look, look. If 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 you want to pass a law that says that ever that a federal law for a federal minimum wage at fifteen dollars an hour, which has been something Bernie Sanders has been obsessing on, you know, back when fifteen dollars was maybe enough to live on. Now it's not even enough. It's just. You know, it's it's really it's really insufficient. Like talk about winning a battle and losing the war. But um, look, the, but, but Doug, what are you saying? The alternative is well, the alternative is the, the there, there, there are plenty of alternatives. My, my argument being that what has caused Amazon or other companies to pay fifteen dollar minimum wages across their system has not been the fear of legislation. It's that's just not what it is. It has been. How do you how do you gain um, uh, the right employees? How do you maintain employee? There's all kinds of things. Look, what, Bernie Sanders threat was not across the system for. I mean, I, he, he was not saying every single company in the country was going to have to uh, 
uh, pass a $15 minimum wage. And that's the kind of thing that I think doesn't go far enough to call, in my book, to call a radical reform. Having companies move from $11 or $13 to $15 is it's incremental by its very nature. So all of that to say that what Bernie Sanders has done is is admirable, but he has not presented himself in my book as somebody who does the kinds of things that a president does. So, okay, name someone in since Ronald Reagan on the left who has <laughs> had a good enough or a a chance at becoming president who represents this radical view that you're saying. Well, that's a good uh, okay, that's a good point is what candidates are going to have have made it through a democratic system, the the democratic uh, party system that are going to be acceptable as a uh, as a progressive for, for for a progressive. My argument is this. The best way to move progressive policies forward across the system is not to ask that the president be the person who's the most progressive. That's just not the way that we want to see uh, progressive uh, causes be championed in the country. My argument is, how do you get more progressive causes to take root and become law in the country? The best way to do that is to have progressive candidates run for Congress, progressive candidates run for Senate, and to move the balance of the legislative branch. And then you pull a president into that flow. This idea that what we need is the president to be the most conservative, if you're conservative, or the most progressive, I don't think that's the role of the presidency. So this is an argument that I'm making, if you want, from my vantage point as a progressive, if you want to see a progressive agenda be pushed, the role of the presidency has to do a whole number of things. And that set of things does not lend itself to having the president necessarily be the most progressive on four or five areas, because those four or five areas are going to run into all kinds of roadblocks. Look, a Barack Obama or even a George, George W. Bush on some topics wanted to be more progressive than his own Congress, wanted to pass immigration reform. Barack Obama wanted to pass something that sounded like it was going to be universal health care and then couldn't because of the way the legislative system works. So that's my argument that why Bernie Sanders, I think what he should do is he should be, he should have been moving Congress. He should have been moving senators over to his view. The thing about about uh, Senator Sanders that I've heard, and I don't know this you know, you know, person, I've just heard it through through media reports, is that people in the Senate and people in, in the House, they don't like him. They don't work with him. He doesn't work with them like that's just not his thing. Right. His thing is not to be someone that's bringing coalitions together and and bringing about bills and trying to move. But he makes arguments then that sound like they're about incremental change. Right. Universal health care for more people than there are now until we get to all increase the minimum wage, all the rest of this. So my argument is he's a, he should continue to be a champion of these ideas, but he's really not the guy to be the president. Okay, there's a lot to respond to, and I know we have to take a break. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's great. Okay, so uh, we got we do have a couple of callers too. Uh, do you want to sh- should we should we bing off one or two of these real quick? I think we should take a break and then just go straight to them. Okay, we'll 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 peel off those uh, people right after the break. So, Mark, Randy, Jennifer, hold, hold on with us, and we'll be, we'll get with you after the break. AM nine fifty, the Progressive Voice of Minnesota. Hey, welcome back to the. Minnesota Progressive Repartee. Hunter and I are chatting about Bernie Sanders. Hunter, I I, I unloaded a lot on you uh, before the uh, for the for the break. Uh, do you want to go right to callers, or do you have a do you have a couple of well? I'll just up? quickly uh, sure. the uh, uh, so focusing the movement around Congress uh, in instead of the uh, presidency. Mm-hmm. I mean that is what he's been doing. I mean we have the new young leader in Congress. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who is a direct result mm-hmm. of the 2016 Bernie Sanders candidacy. It's I, like, uh, I mean, I agree to things that you're saying to a certain extent. I, I, what I don't understand, though, is what, uh, who your option is. Because, like, yes, those things are great. I wish I, uh, 
Franklin Roosevelt would run, but that's not a reality. <laughs> well, I think Hunter Ostenberg Padgett should run. Uh, I think that would solve it. Uh, I well, here, I, I, look, I the point I uh, my response to that is. I don't think you need the candidate who is themselves to be the most progressive, even as progressive as I am. What I think you want is them, in my view, to be open to the progressive ideas and the one that you can move in that progressive agenda, move in that progressive way that you but they don't have to have shown themselves necessarily because there's a there's a big range within the Democratic Party and there's a big range within progressivism. Like I just don't find the four Bernie Sanders pillars to be the best of the progressive ideas. And that's part of my own bone to pick with the guy is I think there's better things we could be arguing about over 30 or 40, 50 years than what he chose to pick. So I would just differ with him on that. But what I hear a lot from the Bernie buddies is that that any other ideas that aren't held by Bernie, they're like, well, yeah, I know, but he's just got these and they're better than the ones that other people. But if all you're going to do is sort of argue about one set of betters versus another set of betters, I think you could get there. I think you could find candidates who think a lot about criminal justice reform. I think you could find candidates who think a lot about the environment in more progressive ways than Bernie Sanders does. I think you could find a lot of People who think about how we could redistribute our war and our internationalism in more progressive ways than Bernie Sanders does. So I don't think he's the most progressive across the board on every single thing. So I, my argument is every one of our Democratic candidates should be progressives. And what we need to do is to have a full progressive national movement. The problem is that the progressive ideas lose traction with regular people, not just with candidates. Um, and I actually think that, that Bernie Sanders is probably the least effective um, at helping other people who don't already agree with him move that direction. Uh, now, um, I will say the AOC argument is sort of curious. Bernie Sanders did put together, uh, you know, a congressional campaign uh, support committee to support progressive candidates. And when I was on the Vote Common Good tour, we were supportive of the candidates. They were supportive. I'm, I'm all into that. Many yeah. of the other than AOC who won in a prime, she primaried a sitting Democrat. She didn't take out a Republican. But. Uh, and other than that, you don't see a lot of victories and you have to build the infrastructure for these ideas to carry. That's been one of my real beefs also about the progressive movement is that the progressive movement, especially in the Democratic Party, has not worked hard enough to build the infrastructure to play at the at the highest of levels. And I would love to see them play at the highest of levels. You you you, uh, you would disagree. Well, with that. it's I mean, I. What more do you do? I mean, he literally started the progressive caucus in uh, the House and Senate. I mean, the guy's sure. just been there. Like, and uh, you're saying that he should be doing what he's doing, but he hasn't been good enough at it. Or yeah, something yeah. Like? The progressive caucus has underperformed painfully, painfully, and. Look, I, I'm not saying that Bernie Sanders did not organize and then chair the progressive caucus, but it's catchiness around the country over the last 30 years that he's been doing but, so has been a real pro like the if that's the, because to be an actual progressive democrat was an impossibility uh, 10 20 years ago it would it was just the party was just uh staunch neoliberalism and he's been the one who's been around him paul wellstone uh that that have fought for this, and it's the reason that we can even have the discussion around actual progressive issues that we want to accomplish today is people like that who have turned on uh, just thousands and millions of people to these ideas and they want something different. This wasn't an option like during the Bush era when I first got into all this. That This is not how Democrats talked. Well, okay, I, I grant to you that um, the, pop, the, the more popular... Uh, the more well-known Democrats were talking about this. Some of what Bernie Sanders did was to, to with his presidential run was made this more uh, household and more mainstream to the point that we're talking about it now, mostly because of the influence that he had on the Clinton campaign. Right. And, and challenging her coronation, which I think I thought was a good thing that he really pushed those ideas and sort of uh, 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 popularized it. But he was more of, Again, more of a popularizer from the outside than he was somebody who said, look, over the last 35 years, what I have done is to build an entire movement inside the Democratic Party. What what I find curious is people say, well, don't blame him for not having built out a system of progressivism because that was super hard. That's my point. It's super hard. And 
having the president be that person that holds those views is not going to accomplish the the outcomes that we want. The, the president, I believe, is going to be stymied. So I think the better thing is for these progressive ideas to be built out through our entire system. And I would totally differ that there were not that that there were um, not places for progressive candidates on the Democratic side to express a voice. I mean, we, you've, you've already named off a number of them uh, that we know of. And my point, not, and I'm not landing this only on Bernie Sanders, what I'm landing it on is the progressive movement within the political system has been woefully underdeveloped. And that's, I think, where absolutely the answer, I think, to this is to get candidates, presidential candidates that are movable and then to make a progressive movement that will move them rather than just hoping that we get the person to be the president who thinks the way we do on those topics. And then we all become frustrated to the degree that Barack Obama was progressive on some topics of which he was. Most of those were stymied for partly during the time of his presidency when the Democrats held control of the House and of the Senate. So my point being, if we want to see a real progressive movement, the answer is not get the most progressive president. The answer is cause a progressive movement. Now, to the degree that Bernie Sanders has done that, I want him in the race. I want him influencing all of that. I want him pushing all of that. But in the end, the reason I don't support is uh, don't support until he becomes the nominee. And then, of course, I do, uh, because, you know, I'm, I'm a I'm a bit of a fall in line person like that, uh, which I think some of the other Bernie Sanders supporters, you know, uh, might have a different opinion about if if they're if they're if they're willing to do so. But until we get to that point, what we need to do is make sure that we're making a progressive movement all the way across the board in in conversations and in politicians and all the rest of it. All right. Let's go to the phones because they've been waiting patiently. Yeah. Well, maybe patiently. Maybe they've been yelling into their speaker. I don't know how patiently they've been. (laughs) All right. uh, So let's let's go. Mark, Randy, Jennifer, and uh, we're going to run into a break. But uh, Mark, what you got, buddy? Okay. first, Bernie Sanders raised six million dollars in 24 hours. The next closest candidate uh, was Kamala Harris, who raised one point six million. And the average donation from Bernie Sanders was twenty seven dollars. Yeah. Bernie Sanders wiped everybody out in one day with little donations from regular people. Uh-huh. I, I, I'm having a hard time understanding, Doug, where you're coming from here, because you haven't answered Hunter's question about who is your choice. My choice is somebody and who's more per, who's who doesn't have to be as progressive as that. That's moving. Oh, Kamala Harris. Name. I'd be glad to have Kamala Harris. I'd be glad to have a Cory Booker. I'd be glad to have a. Uh, a Beto O'Rourke. I'd be glad to have a Joe Biden. I'd pick Those any are establishment, just like Barack Obama. All right, Obama here we go. All right, Barack yeah, look. Obama was a prepackaged. You okay. know, said everything everybody wanted okay. to hear at the beginning, Mark, and then as soon as he got elected, he gave a speech and he said, "We need to look forward and not backward." I get it. I get Guantanamo it. Guantanamo is look, still open. Um, he I understand. Look, he got involved yes, in look, Arabia. look. I understand that every president has not, but th- but this idea again. See, here it is. That's a great example. I think Mark's a great example of this. Here's the argument. When Bernie Sanders first got into the race in 2016, the whole argument was Hillary has all the money. That shows she's the real candidate. Look at how much money she has. She raised so much money. Bernie Sanders hardly has any money. He's a little startup. But then he caught fire. And now people say in one day he raised four or six million dollars the first day he got in off of what you know having uh been a lag from 2016 and they say about the other candidates see they don't really have a chance because he apparently has all the energy well he was running these other candidates are just getting started the way he was just getting started back in the day so this whole thing that it's only bernie sanders or nothing that he's the only candidate that would actually be able to carry a progressive agenda. That is exactly the thing that I think uh, is worth is, is worth a conversation, and I, f- I just fundamentally disagree with it. Well, we're not saying he's the only, but he's, no, he pretty I, he's much is. the most principled. It no, is principled. Hunter, he hasn't okay, Hunter, wavered me, on these things. Yeah, well, Hunter, that, okay, that's, there's a lot of people who haven't wavered on their four things. Right, like that's oh, it's more than four things, though. It's four a pillars. challenge. Any okay, find <laughs> any injustice in the past three decades, and there's going to be a video of Bernie Sanders talking down about it. <laughs> yeah, like okay. he's been there. He's just the, the, there's very hard to dig up any dirt on him politically. Well, I will say he only earned a D minus from the from the NRA, and any guy that doesn't earn an F 
doesn't get my vote from the NRA. Uh, that's that's the closest thing I can get to dirt. Did you vote for Tim Walls? He had an A. <laughs> I know, no, I know it. I know. I'm just kidding. I'm just saying that he didn't go far enough to be hated by the uh, by the NRA. He could have he could have pushed that a little bit a further. D minus. Okay. That's okay. your critique. Yeah, that's my critique. No, I'm just kidding on that. But okay, okay, Hunter. So let me flip this question around and ask it to you this way. You're you're telling me, of course, he's not the only candidate. But then you're saying to me, well, who else? So I'll ask you that question. If not Bernie Sanders, then who else? Who would I? Who do I like? Who else is a progressive? Who else is a progressive that would carry the cause if not Bernie Sanders? Because I'm making the argument. I think you people are saying it's Bernie Sanders or nothing. And you're saying, no, 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 I'm not saying that. I like so Elizabeth Warren. I like Andrew Yang. I like Tulsi Gabbard. Oh, Tulsi Gabbard. We should have a conversation yeah. about that one. Really? Well, I yeah, I can be swayed on that, but yeah, I do like too. her. Me too. Yeah. OK. But um, yeah, I, I, look, Andrew Yang would be fantastic. And but, I like Amy Klobuchar for who she is. She she mm. actually is running a different campaign than the rest of them. Uh, she She's running as a moderate and she backs it up as a moderate. And I respect her as a person. My views are different, though. Yeah, so I'm going to support a candidacy on uh, policy. Yeah. 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 Mine are too. Uh, mine are as well. Uh, all right, should we go to a commercial and then come back and yeah. get, get Randy? And, all right, Randy and Jennifer, really sorry, but, you know, get Hunter and I going. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> so we'll get to you after the break. AM 950, Progressive Voice of Minnesota. Hi, this is... Super glad you're back. I was talking to people on the live stream because we do both the audio version of this and then the uh, and then the live stream. All right, so let's jump. I, I was just saying to the people on the live stream, uh, again, I try to make the argument. It's about who would make the best president and what's the role of the presidency and the executive branch in moving these ideas. And uh, that often uh, is it, uh, people who have particular policy interests just think about it differently. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let, what, what do we go to go to Randy in St. Cloud. Randy, you've been waiting an awful long time. Thanks for uh, sticking with us. Well, am I here? You're here, Randy. All right. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, I was one of the guys screaming into my phone there for a minute. Um, so you would be fine with Joe Biden. Well, let's see. Clarence Thomas, that didn't have any consequences for us. Won't have any in the future either, I'm sure. Um, let's oh see. Kamala Harris, uh, criminal justice reform. She's all for it. Uh she wanted to put the parents of truant students in jail as a way to stop truancy. That was a good plan. Now, let's see. Who else did you like? Oh, Cory Booker. Yeah, let's not be able to import drugs from... Oh, but I'm not taking any corporate money anymore. No more. None of that. No more corporate money for me. Nope. Thank you, Randy. I think well, I get your point. Randy, is there is there any candidate other than Bernie Sanders that you think would meet your? I mean, I, yeah, I gave you the list of the people that have yeah, currently and yeah. currently Tulsi, announced. Tulsi Gabbard, uh, Elizabeth Warren is is unbelievable. You know, uh, yeah, there's people. Okay, yeah, um, but you you happen to name four people. I think. Uh, yeah, I'm more. I am. I am more just, open. Uh, he was like a magician. No, he, is, he came in and sure. just mesmerized everyone. <laughs> he did. There was something, something going on there that people really bit into About that guy's. That guy's Beto, I prefer that he stay in Texas, run for governor, run for senator, because the Texas Democratic Party has never had its biggest successes when he ran. Stay in Texas, you'll do more common good. Well, then uh, entering right. this uh, donkey right race of that. 20 people. I think you might be right on that one. I, I, I do. I mean, I think there's an argument to make on all these. And, and Randy, I, I appreciate your point. I think it's a good one. Look, all there are a number of candidates who are seeking the nomination, the Democratic nomination that have particular issues on which they would uh, not be. Um, not be my preference. I'm more progressive than all those people. I'm bothered by a whole number of things that those people have done. Do I think, and I represent this form of progressivism, do I think that every presidential candidate has to be pristine by some standard of progressive uh, uh, demand? No, I would love that. But if we did that, I will just say there's a whole lot of those people. Tulsi Gabbard doesn't meet that, doesn't meet that criteria. I mean, her views on on uh, LGBTQ inclusion people has changed recently. So if the idea is you've held <clears throat> progressive ideas your entire professional life and that's you've held on to those for decades, that's what gets you the, the pass. Look, it's very, very difficult to find any candidates that that's going to be true from every candidate we're going to have. <clears throat> someone's going to find 
things that are disqualifying of them. What I'm trying to say is I think it's possible to take candidates who are willing to be moved as Democrats and to move them. And the degree to which Barack Obama didn't do that, the degree to which Bill Clinton didn't do that, the degree to which Jimmy Carter didn't do that, those are all things that need to be addressed. And what I'm trying to argue for is that we need a strong progressive movement that's going to do everything we can to move them. Uh, and let's keep. Okay, so Jennifer in Stillwater. Uh, Jennifer, you've really stayed for uh, a long time on hold. Thank you. Yeah, I'm totally exasperated. You're going to have to take calls again, you know, tomorrow or next week on this. <laughs> Hunter, because well, yes. I've been on hold for, you know, 30 minutes. And Doug, you have been on a soapbox the entire hour, and you're not letting anybody respond. And everything Hunter has said has been factually correct. And, um, you know, there are so many problems factually with what you're saying. I mean, Hillary Care was not single payer health care, first of all. It was universal health care. Those are two different things. Mm-hmm. Universal health care, she was going to drive people, it was like Obamacare, into private insurance companies, and we'd still be stuck with that. Um, Bernie is doing single payer, which is totally different. Um, also, uh, let's see, what else? Um, you know, Amy Klobuchar and Tina Smith. They have refused to sign on to Bernie's single-payer um, health care plan. Um, Al Franken was on it, but we got rid of them. Uh, we got rid of him. So um, there's only 16 people signed on to it. So all these Democrats, that's why Bernie can't get anything done, because all the Democrats in the Senate are neoliberals. And you're blaming the one guy who's been no, trying to fight th- for, for European-style social democracy which is what it, you know, I'm a social Democrat. I have been, you know, I have two degrees in international relations. I basically, um, you know, majored in Europe. And I also have been fighting since the late 80s for us to have a, you know, a German, French, Nordic um, style um, system here. And Bernie's been fighting for that his whole life. And you're blaming him, the victim. I'm not he's been blaming held back by neoliberal no. Democrats and Republicans. Listen, uh, um, th- th- thank career. you, Jennifer. I appreciate the call very much. I, I, look, I'm, I'm not saying Bernie's wrong. That's not my point. My point is, I think that what we need to do is to advocate for those positions. I don't know that he'd make the best president. Uh, and and I, know we, I, I know we've got to go, but I do think that the right question is, is there anybody other than Bernie that would be supportable? Uh, is 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 the right question, and uh, I appreciate that it can be exasperating to Bernie Sanders supporters that they feel that there's nobody else other than him. And I just want to make the argument: I think there's another way, if it's not him, that we can advocate for progressive positions across the the the, the federal system. That's and quick, if you if you love Bernie, tune in tomorrow because I'm hosting. Yeah, Hunter, all day. <laughs> he got to soapbox that thing all day tomorrow. Hunter, <laughs> thanks for the great debate. Appreciate it, buddy. Yes, it was fun. Hey, AM nine fifty, Progressive Voice of Minnesota.